Balance, one of the most hottest talk shows in Eastern North Carolina. We are so glad to be back with you, to be back into your homes, and I hope you are inviting us back with open arms. We miss you guys, and we hope you have missed us as well. Unfortunately, my co-host, Kalia, she has moved to another state, she's moved her business, and she's thriving and doing well, but we certainly, we certainly do miss her. So again, we are so glad to be back with you right here on The Balance. Stay tuned. We have a special guest today we want to introduce you to, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy her ministry, and we're going to introduce her now. Hello, Marina Saylor. How are you today? Doing great. What about you? Great. So glad to have you back on the show. It's good to be back. Right. Do you remember the last time we were doing the show? I do. Yeah, we had some weather conditions going on. We did. It, it was, was pouring so rain. So loud, we could barely hear one another. <laughs> yes. So enough of that. Catch us up. Tell us what's going on with you and with your ministry, um, without walls, international ministry. Um, yes, outside the walls, international ministries. Uh, we have been going to Tanzania, uh, Africa now since 2011. Right. Uh, four years ago, God stepped me and my husband out into the ministry of uh, Outside the Walls. And uh, we have actually been uh, going and living in the desert with the Maasai wow. for the past, this will make the past four years that we have been going. And uh, while going there and living with this tribe, it's just been amazing. God has just opened up so many doors. It's been divine appointment after divine appointment. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, in your life, in ministry, uh, when there is a divine appointment, you just know it's a God thing. Yes. And this is truly a God thing. And uh, he's just, uh, have re he's really given us a tremendous, huge vision in building his kingdom over there. And uh, I never really, um, in my life, had to experience anything like this. Right. So knowing that it is God is, uh, is in our hearts so deep uh, in loving his people there. Right. I mean, the first year we went in 2011, I mean, it's like we had been there all of our life. So it was just a natural feeling. You knew God had called you because Absolutely. you just felt like you belonged there. Absolutely. And uh, and from uh, first going with our church, which mm -hmm. was Goldsboro Worship Center, right. was, uh, was the first time we'd ever been with our uh, pastor, Dan Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, God just continued to open doors for ministry uh, for me. And uh, through that, developing outside the walls. And we have a huge range of where we minister from, uh, right where we go in uh, Karatu, the orphanage where the church goes to. Uh, we actually travel like five miles away into Moshi. Wow. Now let me ask you, the title is so befitting because of what you're doing you know, without walls, because a lot of times, and, and I think when you're serving, when you're going on mission trips, that's the highest level of servitude. You know, I really think so. So tell me, um, how did you come up with your ministry name? I had searched for like three years on the internet. Really? And every time I type in a name, there would be like pages and pages of that name. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be sitting in a meeting with some pastors at our church, and I heard the Holy Spirit speak, and he said, outside the walls. I knew exactly what he was saying. And when I went home that day, uh -huh. I didn't mention anything to my husband. And he said, uh, outside the walls. I'm like, oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> now that was confirmation. That was a God thing. That it really was definitely was. confirmation. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing about God because he always confirms his word. Yes. He always confirms his word. And you kind of reminds me of me and my husband when we were thinking about something. It's like, you know you won. Because most of the time when God gives you something, he'll confirm it through the other one. Right. Yeah, he will. That's so good. Right. And so that's how we came up with the name. Right. And uh, the, the vision that God has given us is actually, it's, it's bigger than anything that I could ever dream of. And most of the time when God gives you a vision, it will be bigger than something <laughs> just you can do. That's you know, correct. It will be, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, God gives you something you think, I can't do this. Because he wants the glory. He's going to get the glory. He's going to get the credit. So we don't get caught up in us. Right. Because we know it's beyond our means. It's beyond something that we can do as a human. That's correct. And we need his help, his supernatural power. Absolutely. To carry out his work. Absolutely. Wow. Um, 
Well, uh, three years ago, he gave me a vision of building a home mm -hmm. in Tanzania. In the village where we live with the Maasai, it's actually in the desert. Right. We are actually uh, 45 minutes from Moshi, which is a town. Right. Now, let me ask you, you said the Maasai, and some of our audience might not understand when you say the Maasai. So can you explain to them about the Maasai? The it's a tribe. History? It's almost like an Indian tribe. Mm -hmm. um, this is the Maasai tribe that's in Tanzania, and there are um, several different tribes. And this is the Molai tribe right. that we actually live with. And they have actually brought us in and we are a family. We don't look at them any other way than family. Right. And uh, so uh, God opened the door last year and he actually gave us land. It, right there in the desert, what we have been praying for, right. and I've had prayer warriors praying right. Right. Uh, for God to open up land for us. Uh, because. Uh, in my mind, I already had the home, mm -hmm. you know, uh, figured out how we wanted it. Right. But this home that we are going to build, now that we have the land, we're in the process right now of raising funds for the home. Okay. And uh, this home will actually have a common area. It'll have our living quarters, mm -hmm. an office, a prayer room. I told my husband, I said, no matter where we move, it has to have a prayer, prayer room. room. That's important. And uh, so uh, it will have dorms in it. It'll have a men's dorm and women's dorm, a pastor's quarters. Right. And uh, in this home, we will host evangelists, pastors, preachers, teachers, awesome. medical teams, dental teams, right. miss, uh, mission trips, mm -hmm. and so much more. Bible studies, I mean, you name it, it's going to be it's going to be hosted out of this home. That's awesome. And uh, it's also God gave me the name for the home, and it's called the Good News Home. <laughs> that's great. The Good News Home. That is that is a wonderful name because that's what you're doing. You're you're, you're not only spreading the good news, but you're showing the love of God. You're demonstrating the good news, right. you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's what the good news is. That's right. right. So you go into the you go into with the tribe, okay? Um, what about customs? Do how do you kind of like if somebody out there maybe they're wondering, you know, if I was going to go on a mission trip and I'm on living with you know the tribes, how do I get accustomed to their customs? I mean, are, how different are they from are they from you yours? It's, it's pretty different. Uh, we abide by their customs, you okay. know. Uh, we honor their customs in dress and everything. Uh, so when we go, uh, and the teams that come over, we will make sure that they dress appropriate right. to their customs because we don't want to offend anybody. Right. So uh, make sure when those teams do come over mm -hmm. uh, that they will know what the customs are right. so they'll be prepared for it. They'll know what to do because we also live without water. <laughs> We, uh, we don't have running water right. or we don't have electricity. Okay. Uh, last year while we were there, the tribe that we live in, in Kiwani is mm -hmm. the village, uh, they had a well, a pump well. And if you've ever had to pump a well, it's really hard. Right. So when we were there last year, through donations that come through to us, uh, we were able to make that well a solar well. Wow. And now all they have to do is just turn the knob mm -hmm. and the water runs. And they actually have what they would call spigots. They have uh, three different places where the spigots are where they can turn the water on. And so that was just a huge blessing that we were able to do through donations that people give us. And uh, and that's what we are at right that now. Is, that's a blessing. It really is. It is. And through um, not only that, we were able to concrete uh, a church floor that uh, they had church uh, on dirt. Right. And they also, uh, in this church, just on benches, and, mm -hmm. the, and the benches were held up by rocks. Wow. So uh, it was two years ago, I think, we actually purchased 100 chairs awesome. in that church. That's so awesome. um, it's actually doing more than just going and uh, preaching, mm -hmm. evangelizing, right. holding crusades, which are evangelistic uh, meetings right. outside, right. and um, doing women's conferences, men's conferences, youth conferences. Uh, revivals. Yeah. I mean, uh, you name it. God just opened so many doors for us to be able to do this. And this is what we want to do: is bring people over right. so they can do this also. That is also. Awesome. And you know, the good thing about God, when He sends you, He provides. He really does. So not only are you all, like you said, bringing over evangelists, giving them the Word of God, but you're demonstrating the love of God. Absolutely. And I think that's so important. Absolutely. Because a lot of times we miss it. We just teach and we talk, but we don't show. We don't show that love. So, you know, kudos to you guys, you know, just blessings to you all. And I just pray God just continue to elevate you higher and higher because you're really doing the will of God. And to give up your lifestyle to go over and to just, you know, sometimes we try to take our lifestyle with us. Sometimes we try to go over because we can do, we want to um, kind of take their customs and turn into our customs. 
Yeah. So that's that's a blessing. That really is a blessing. It is, and uh, like I said, it's a love thing. Right. It is. It's it a is. heart. It's a heart condition. It has to be. <laughs> it really, it does. really is. You know, when you're so, we're so spoiled over in America, and we Absolutely. go to other countries and you see how they live. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, you know, we see how blessed that we see how blessed we are. We really are, and we don't sometimes understand how blessed we are because we are so spoiled and we have a spirit of entitlement. Mm -hmm. You know, and when we go over to other countries and see how they live, it's like, you know, God, thank you for the blessings, but they're blessed because they have a heart for God. I actually say they're the blessed ones. <laughs> yeah, that's because they're blessed because they really have a heart for God. Yes, yeah. But we're going to take a break and we're going to be right back. Okay. more. Hi, welcome to downtown Kinston. This is Salon Stephen. I'm the owner, Steve Farnell. We welcome you to come and visit us sometime. We're here at 209 North Heritage Street, Kinston, North Carolina. Our phone number here is 252 523 4800 and we love save news. I'm Nikki. I work at Rillo Drugs, 300 North Queen Street, Kingston, North Carolina. Our telephone number is 252-527-6929 and I love save news. I invite you to our church, uh, 138 Emerson Road, Mount Olive. We have a 9 o'clock service and an 11 o'clock service. And uh, we would love to have you come and worship with us and give God glory. Thank you so much and uh, have a blessed day. Pick up your latest edition of Save News Magazine all around the city. Also, for the latest, follow us on our website, savenews.com, facebook.com slash Save News, Twitter.com slash Save News, and guess what? Instagram.com slash Save News. Stay informed with Save News. Welcome back to The Balance. And again, Miss Minister Lorena Saylor, okay, she's with us. And I just want to ask you, being in ministry with your husband, I'm sure it makes it easier because you guys are on the same accord and you have the same love. You have you have the same gift. We did. I mean, uh, over there, uh, ministering to people, mm -hmm. uh, it, it seems like it's so much easier right. than it is here. I don't know if it's because of the connection that we've made with uh, the people there, but uh, he really strives over there. It's so much right. different than being here in the States. It really is. And again, you're dealing with a different type of people yes. because you have people that are humble with, because of what they don't have. Correct. You know, like I said before, we're so spoiled over in America because of our spirit of entitlement. And, you know, we we have so much and we take so much for granted, you know. We think we're supposed to have and we don't understand how blessed we are. That's correct. Right. So, now in 2010, God gave you this vision. Um, in 2011 was our first year in Tanzania. Right. And but when did he actually give you the vision for you to start preparing and planning? That, that was, was about, about, I think I said 2010. Four, that was about four years ago. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'll read something on your bio about 2010 when you actually, God gave you the vision. Yes. Carry out. Okay. Well, yes, in ministry in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. uh, for I knew then that I had a calling there. Right. Uh, there was something that uh, took place in a crusade that had never happened before. Uh, we were in a crusade and this is like, this only happened twice in my life where it felt like God had took an arrow and just pulled it back and it just mm -hmm. penetrated my heart. Right. And uh, that was one time that it did that. And I knew right then that I had a calling right there right. in Tanzania uh, for the love of his people. Yeah. And that's what keeps us going back year after year after right. year. So someone is saying, you know, I want to go and minister abroad. I want to become an evangelist. God has called me to be an evangelist. You know, the preparation, can you just kind of, how you kind of prepared yourself for it? Um, the calling, because you know, we got a calling, but the Bible says we got to study to show ourselves approved, right, right. and abiding the word of God. And right. we got to know in our knowing that God has called us, you know, so, and that's a preparation time. You know, when God called you into ministry, you just can't go out and start ministering. Correct. That's a preparation time. Correct. There is something that I do myself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jesus went away right. uh, to spend time by himself. And I actually do that two to three times a year. Mm -hmm. And my husband is so understanding about that. He, he just lets me go. And I just I barricade myself in a room lots of times 
wherever I'm at. And I just spend time with the Lord. I seek Him and get sermons together. And, and uh, it is just uh, an amazing time, just me and the Lord spending time together. Spending time in the Word. Yes. Spending time in prayer. Yes. Yeah. Doing your research. Absolutely. Right. In the presence of God. I mean, there is nothing like it. Nothing like being in the presence of God, getting into mm-hmm. worship. You know, That's just right. get into His presence so you can hear from Him. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That is awesome. So we know what to do, where to go, how to do it. You know, always be led by the Holy Spirit. And and while we're over there, I don't know what it is, but being there, even my pastor talking with him, I mean, it's just like it's just so much easier there. You can hear God so much clearer over there. I don't know if it's because of all the chaos that's going yeah, on all here. The yes. Uh, but over there, I mean, it's just, uh, we can hear so much clearer there. And now, does time slow down when you're there? Because, you know, over here, everything is so fast. We're just shaking and moving all the time. <laughs> But, you know, I know my husband and I have been, even then we went to Hawaii, it's like time slowed down, the pace slowed down. We don't have as much to keep us occupied there. We're, right. we're ministering the whole time, mm-hmm. coming and going, you know. I mean, here I've got uh, my children, my grandbabies, right. my, ba- my grandbabies keep me busy. Right. Other ministry here, you know, ministry within the church, mm-hmm. you know, it just constantly keeps you going along with our ministry. So I think being over there, you know, I don't have all that to right. occupy me. So it's just so much easier to keep my mind focused on what we're doing there. Because we're so busy. And sometimes we have distractions. Yes. You know, some are good distractions, some are not so good distractions. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, even with family, you know, we get distracted, we get distracted, we get um, <laughs> sidetracked. Absolutely. Right. And that's yeah. not a bad distraction, but sometimes we just don't find that balance that's true. that we need, you know, in life. That's so true. Yeah. I mean, it really is, you know, trying to balance marriage, trying to balance children, trying to balance ministry, trying to balance home. I mean, it is. It is. uh, It's tough sometimes. It really is. Well, you know, again, you know, I know that it takes money to do ministry. Yes. It does. It takes money to to do ministry. And what are some of the ways that people can donate to the ministry? Uh, they can donate. We have a, uh, I will have a continuous fundraiser on Facebook going, okay. uh, as long as we are having fundraising for this for the Good News Home. You can also go to uh, continue to give, and you can put uh, go to search and type in O T W I M, and it will come up. There is a way you can uh, donate that way, right. and you can also donate through Goldsboro Worship Center. Uh, you can go to Give right. and scroll down, and it has Ray and Rena missions, okay. and you can also donate that way. Right. Now, you are missionaries for the church? Or is this a separate ministry? Or is this ministry combined with Goldsboro Worship Center? We are mini- We are actually missionaries for Goldsboro Worship wonderful. Center. Wonderful. Okay. Yes. So that's wonderful because you have the church backing you. Yes. Right. Right. But again, it does take finances to do ministry. It does. It does. Absolutely. And especially the vision. I mean, the vision doesn't stop there. The vision mm-hmm. is so huge. This is just part of it. Right. Right. You know, and once we get the home built, I mean, it would just continue with other visions that we have. It's just, you know, and that's why God is. You know, it's just one thing I brought up. But it, it never stops with Him. Right. You know, the thing I love about it because, you know, Scripture says, when Jesus said, you have done it unto me when you've done it to the least of these. And so going over into a, a country, you know, that is not as advanced as ours, doesn't have the luxuries that we have. Like you said, you know, they don't have running water. They don't have electricity. So you're giving to the least of those. So, you, you know, in the Word, you're doing the, what Jesus would do. You know, sometimes I say, what would Jesus do? And a lot of times when we're in ministry, we don't ask ourselves. Sometimes we're doing ministry, and as far as I'm concerned, it's really not ministry. But you're doing the actual ministry that Jesus has called us to do. Let me ask you a question. You know, we serve in the church, and sometimes we go, like you guys, we want to draw our serving. Is there, is there more fulfillment? It is uh, actually a blessing. They say we bless them. Right. But they don't realize the blessing we get when we go and we see salvation. Mm-hmm. And also, while we're there, um, every person that gives their life to the Lord, we give them a Bible. It is so important that we put a Bible in their hands. Right. They need the Word of God. They do. That is another fundraiser that we have going constantly that is anybody that would love to donate just in the Bible fund uh, because it is important that they get a Bible in their hands. And to make them people understand is that for them to purchase a Bible, it's not going to happen. The money that they have, it goes to, for them to live on. Right. So uh, everyday life. Right. And Bibles are expensive over there. So we want to put a Bible into every person's hands that gives their life to the Lord. And that's so important because without the Word of God, you cannot live this Christian life effectively. Right. right. You cannot. 
But again, finances are so important when you're doing ministry. Please donate to the ministry. She's given us several different um, options that you have to sow into this ministry. And you know, when you sow into good ground, God's going to bless you. You're going to reap a reward. You know, we don't do it to get a reward, but we do it because it's, it's, um, it's God's will. Because she's doing ministry, and we want to support ministry, especially ministry at that level. Uh, we're going to take a moment and ask you to pray for us. Absolutely. You know, can you pray? Absolutely. Yeah, we would love to pray. Pray for someone um, who's the evangelist, who is an evangelist, you know. Pray for the will of God be done in their lives. Let's be led by the Holy Spirit as you pray. So, Absolutely. Can we go into prayer right now in your homes? Can you just bow your head with us as um, evangelists begin to pray? Heavenly Father, God, we come to you, and we just give you all the honor, glory, and praise today, God. Father, I pray for those that are listening today, dear Heavenly Father. I pray for healing in their bodies, dear Heavenly Father. Anyone that, that has an illness in their body, I speak healing up over you. I speak deliverance. Anything that you may be bound with, I command the enemy to loose you by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ today. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that, that um, you just... Perform a miracle today, dear Heavenly Father. You are the miracle worker, yes. dear God. And I believe today that your blood is the same today yes. as it was when you shed it over 2,000 years ago. Your name is more powerful today. There is nothing more powerful than your name. And Father, I pray for those today, dear God, that is listening, that has an, an evangelistic calling up on your life. I pray that there is something that is stirred inside yes. of you, that the Holy Spirit begin to speak to you. I pray for holy boldness for you, because yes. it takes a boldness to step out in a calling that God is giving you. Yes. And I pray that up over your life, because we are in a day right now, in a time that God is calling us for, that He is raising up an army, and you are that yes. army that He is calling to go to the front lines, to be His a soldier that will step out and say, I am willing to go and do no matter what the cost is. And I pray for you today that you step out into the calling that God is giving you, that you would go into the world. You would go into the highways and the hedges and call those in that are needing salvation. And I pray for you today that you just listen to the Holy Spirit and that you just do what he says. There's nothing like when Jesus said, he called us to come. After he called us to come, he called us to go. And that is what I, I speak of over your life today. I pray that, um, that there is a long time with him, that there is the relationship that you build with him. There is nothing like that in your life that you will find that personal relationship that will grow you, that you will know the calling that is in your life because everybody has a purpose and a destiny. And that is what he has called you to do as an evangelistic calling up on your life. And I just pray that up over you today. And uh, I also pray that um, even in your family, I pray for restoration, I pray for healing, I pray that the enemy that he loose you, that you are able to go and do whatever it is that God is calling you yes. to do today. Yes. Um, the harvest is ready. Yes. He is calling us to go and, and bring those in for salvation. I pray for those today that are addicted. Yes. I pray for prostitution. Yes. I pray today for those who are addicted to anything, whether it be drugs, alcohol, pornographic, whatever it may be. I pray that the enemy loose you right now, unbind you by the blood of Jesus Christ, that he unwrap you, that Satan have no hold on you whatsoever, that you fulfill the purpose and destiny in your life today. And uh, I want to pray for those right now that uh, have migraines. Mm -hmm. I believe right now I am, I am speaking to someone that has been bound with migraines. That right now all you have to do is raise your hand and believe that you have been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right now, I want you to just, if you're listening to this and you are suffering from those migraines, I want you to just put your hand right up on your head and say, right now, I am healed from migraines right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe that right now. I heard the Holy Spirit say that if you just put your hand up on your head, you will be healed from those no longer bound and believe and walk in that. I know because I suffered from those migraines ever since I had been 10 years old. And the Holy Spirit came upon me and loosed me from those in 2010. And I have not had one since. Also, those that are addicted to uh, drugs, I was addicted to medication. 
for uh, years. And the Holy Spirit loosed me from those just like that. And since 2010, I have not taken not one medication. I was on 10 different narcotics, and I have not taken any since. So the power of the blood of Jesus Christ yes. is upon you. All you have to do is just walk in it and believe that the Holy Spirit is there to heal you right now through the blood and the name of Jesus Christ today. So I pray these things up over you today, and I hope that you walk in that healing, you walk in that deliverance, that you walk in salvation today. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you have to say is this right here. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I repent from all my sins. I receive you into my heart, and now I belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And today, I am the child of God, no longer an orphan, and I am on my way to heaven with Jesus Christ. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, Amen. 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 What a powerful prayer. I hope you receive that prayer. Listen to the evangelist. Receive the prayer. Receive that word. And like she said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Amen. So make sure you walk into your calling. Prayer about your calling. Know what it is that God has called you to do. And receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Receive everything that God, God has for you. In the name of Jesus. Well, I am so glad, so glad that you came on the show today to tell us about um, Without Walls International Ministries. What a powerful ministry. And again, we want you to donate. We want you to sow into the ministry. And again, if you just want to give us a couple of sites they can go to where they right. can donate. Okay. Write this down in your pen or pencil. <laughs> you can go to Continue to Give. Go to search, type in O-T-W-I-M, you can give that way. You can also give at uh, Goldsboro Worship Center, just go to give and scroll down to Rena and Ray's Missions. You can also give on Facebook. You can also go to our website, which is uh, O-T-W-I-M.net, and you can also give that way. Amen. Well, we are so glad that, again, that you came to the show today to give us some information on your ministry. And I'm sure that the um, listening audience is going to support your ministry and sow into your ministry because, like I said, I believe you sow into good ground, you're going to reap a good harvest. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Um, when is your next trip? When uh, are you leaving? June the 12th. June the 12th. And um, for the audience information, would they be able to give even while you all are away on your trip? Yes, you can get to, uh, you can go to continue to give, go to search, and just type in O-T-W-I-M, and you can give that way. You can also give on Facebook. We have a fundraiser going on there. It will be a constantly fundraiser. You can also go to Goldsboro Worship Center, which we are missionaries out there. Go to give and search for Rena and Ray Missions. And you can also go to our website, check us out, see what we're about, and you can also give that way. Wonderful. So... Even though they're gone on their mission trip, you can continue to give while they are away. When they come back 24-7, 12 months out of the year, you can sow into this ministry. Amen. Amen. And you do have a Facebook page? We do. Okay. It is and under uh, Evangelist Lorena Enix Sailor. Okay. And the website. And the website. Uh, OTWIM.net. All right. Audience, thank you so much for inviting us into your home today. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this segment of The Balance. Look forward. We will be back. We're looking forward to coming into your homes again. Take care. God bless each of you. Have a wonderful day. We love you all. God bless. Mm -hmm.